Basically, one person looks very much like another one. We inherit many characteristics from our parents, which is why we tend to look like them. But we also inherit many differences. Just in our faces, we may have a different shaped nose or mouth, or different coloured eyes or hair. The combination of these and many other differences and similarities adds up to an individual who is unique. Like Charles Darwin, the great naturalist of the 19th century. This is Down House in Kent, where Darwin wrote his famous book, The Origin of Species. His theory of evolution, that one species can change, can evolve into a new species, was revolutionary. It was based on the fact that although organisms inherit similarities from their parents, they can also inherit differences. It came as a considerable shock to Darwin that Alfred Wallace, another British naturalist, came up with the same theory of evolution at the same time. It was one of the great coincidences of science. The theory that species evolve wasn't new, but what Darwin and Wallace were able to do was show how evolution could actually take place. Most plants and animals produce far more offspring than are needed to replace the parents when they die. The water flea may produce 50 young in each brood. This fox has given birth to six cubs. And this turtle is laying more than a hundred eggs. However many offspring are produced, the numbers of any one species remain fairly constant. Many turtle eggs will never hatch. So many eggs are laid that although large numbers may be destroyed, there are plenty that hatch out. Few of these baby turtles will live long enough to reach the sea. At this vulnerable stage, they are very easy prey for the predators. Life is a struggle for existence, not just against predators, but against disease, parasites, the weather, or starvation. If some of the offspring have inherited the slightest characteristic that might give them a better chance in life, then they are more likely to survive, reproduce, and pass on this advantage to their offspring. It's the survival of the fittest. Darwin called this process natural selection. Without natural selection, even the slowest breeder could overrun the world if all its offspring survived. Darwin estimated that if all the young elephants that are born survived and reproduced, then after 500 years, there would be 15 million elephants, all descended from one pair. All organisms, both living and extinct, have evolved through natural selection. New species evolved as they inherited changes that gradually accumulated over many generations. Changes that made them better adapted to their surroundings.
Natural selection is going on all the time, but it's slow. Darwin spent years building up evidence to support his theory of evolution through natural selection, but he'd never seen it in action. Perhaps the clearest example of natural selection actually taking place is seen in the peppered moth. It's a fairly common moth with a very good camouflage system. It merges with its background, the lichen-covered tree trunks. It's there, right in the middle of the picture. No wonder predators have trouble finding them. But during the Industrial Revolution, the smoke and soot from the factories were polluting the countryside. As a result, many lichens were killed and tree trunks were blackened by soot. Now, the light-coloured moths were spotted easily by birds. Then in 1848, a black variety of the peppered moth was found near Manchester. This black moth had an obvious advantage over the lighter variety it merged with the dark background of the polluted trees. Predators soon reduced the number of light moths in the area. The light moths became rare. The black variety became the common form. It had a better chance of surviving and living long enough to pass on the advantage of its camouflage to its offspring, but only in industrial parts. In unpolluted areas, the black variety was at a disadvantage. But now that pollution is being controlled in industrial areas, the number of black moths is going down. The lighter varieties are coming back. As the environment changes, natural selection continues. Other animals have evolved a different defence system against predators. Bright colours seem like an invitation to be eaten. But many are unpleasant to eat, some are even poisonous. Their survival depends on predators learning not to eat them. In this experiment, the young toad has never eaten a bee before, but he soon finds out about the sting. After such a painful experience, he ignores bees from now on. A few days later, and he still remembers his experience. And so, bees are safe, at least from this toad. The toad is now being offered a hoverfly. He ignores it because it's just like a bee, but in fact it's perfectly harmless. It has no sting. Its only defence is to look like a bee. It has evolved this defence through natural selection. Flies that inherited markings that made them look like bees deceived their predators. But it's still hungry enough to eat this dragonfly. Darwin knew that inheritance was the key to natural selection, but he had no idea how it worked. Now, we know that inheritance is controlled by chemicals, here in the nucleus of the cell. These chemicals are contained on long, thread-like chromosomes, only visible when the cell is dividing. On each chromosome are bands of dark material where the genes are found. Genes are made of the complex chemical that controls heredity. It's called deoxyribose nucleic acid. Thankfully, DNA for short. The chromosomes get mixed up during sexual reproduction and various new combinations of genetic material are formed. This mixing up of genetic material causes differences between the offspring. 
Not all differences are as obvious as the colours in this family of kittens. Very occasionally, a change or mutation may occur in a gene or chromosome that affects the whole animal, like this albino giraffe. It has no camouflage. Normally, such an obvious animal would have been eaten by predators when it was young, so to find a fully grown albino in the wild is extremely rare. Mutations occur in all living things, even bacteria. Mutations are rare, but because bacteria multiply rapidly, sometimes doubling their numbers every 20 minutes, mutations occur more frequently. Some bacteria cause disease, and a mutation in a disease-causing bacterium can have a disastrous effect on us. For instance, in 1972, this typhoid bacterium caused the death of 14,000 people living in Mexico. Normally, the disease can be treated successfully with an antibiotic drug, but a mutation occurred, making the bacterium resistant. This is what happened. In this animation, the dark blobs are typhoid bacteria. Normally, they're destroyed by an antibiotic. But occasionally, when bacteria are multiplying, a mutation may occur. If the mutation makes a bacterium resistant to the antibiotic, then that bacterium will survive. It reproduces and passes on the resistance to the antibiotic to later generations. The Mexican typhoid epidemic was eventually controlled by using a completely different antibiotic. Mutations also occur in man. Most are harmful, but some are just inconvenient, like this very tall man. Darwin's theory of evolution shocked many of the strongly religious members of Victorian society. He was ridiculed by the press in cartoons like these. They were horrified at the suggestion that we had evolved from animals. It's now thought that the common ancestor of man and apes lived in the forests of Africa. About 25 or perhaps 20 million years ago, the climate started changing, and during the cooler, drier weather that followed, the forests were gradually replaced by open, grassy plains. Fossil evidence suggests that man first evolved in East Africa. Only a few fossils have so far been found, but the search continues. It takes a lot of patience and hard work. And patience does have its rewards. Consider this fossilized jawbone, for instance we can learn a considerable amount from it. The teeth tell us that this came from a man-like animal and not from an ape. But we can't use evidence like this to tell us the size of the creature's brain. But occasionally, enough fragments of a complete skull are discovered to tell us a great deal more about our past. This is a replica of the oldest skull so far found, two and a half million years old and a direct ancestor of man. Now the shape of our skull is different from the shape of this one, and it is different because of the effects of natural selection. In this animation, the skull is already on the way to man, but it's still ape-like. It's got a heavy jaw and only a small space for its brain. Over thousands of years, not millions, because man's evolution has been relatively rapid, natural selection must have favoured animals with the larger skulls containing larger brains. But because changes have been gradual, it's difficult to tell when modern man could actually be recognised, but certainly he was around at least a million years ago.
Our early ancestors moved into the plains looking for food on two legs instead of four. With his two free hands, he was able to hold objects and use them as tools. Later, he became a tool maker. These Aborigines in Australia are using and making tools from natural materials in a way our ancestors may have done more than a million years ago. It's thought that the use and manufacture of tools coincided with the expansion of man's brain. By this time, natural selection was beginning to lose its importance in man's evolution. He had found a faster way of passing on information to his children. He'd learned how to speak. Early man was a hunter. He lived in social groups. Physically, man has changed very little since then. The changes have been mainly cultural. Man has left behind evidence of his early culture in many parts of the world. These cave paintings are thought to be at least 15,000 years old. Man was able to pass on more information when he learned how to write, as in this example of early Egyptian writing. So, by speaking and writing, man quickly passed on far more information than by the slower method of genetic inheritance. Now, we have even faster methods of storing information and passing it on to future generations. And of course, thanks to modern medicine, today, even the weak can survive. So, natural selection, which played such an important part in our evolution, will perhaps have a less important role to play in our future.